The object of the research project now is we were really wanting to study the use of CFRP in strengthening down towards the end regions of reinforced and pre-stressed concrete beams, specifically to address deficiencies in shear capacity. Some of the older structures that may not have been designed for some of our heavier loads will experience shear deficiencies in those areas. We've also had some uh, structures that have been damaged due to overloads. And uh, this gives us an opportunity to be able to address those deficiencies without taking this, the, the structure out of service, to be able to apply it under traffic. And um, in most cases, uh, the general public doesn't even know it's being done while they're driving over the bridge. The two methods to be able to apply this material is they have the dry laid method where they apply the epoxy down on the concrete first and then they apply the carbon fiber material down to the epoxy. The second method is the wet lay method in which they actually apply the epoxy, they impregnate the epoxy into the carbon fiber material and then they apply that to the, the concrete itself. I know that the research project's looking at which way is the most effective, which way is the easiest to apply, and it's probably going to end up being what is preferred by the contractor, what's easiest for him. They're probably looking at that which one takes less time, and they're evaluating the methodologies to be applied in the field. The material itself is reliant upon the bond between the concrete and the carbon fiber material and it uses a high strength epoxy to be able to achieve that bond. The best way to be able to do that is if we could wrap the carbon fiber completely around the circumference of the beam, but in these cases we're limited because there's usually a slab on top of the beam, so that does not allow us to go over that top surface. So we're limited to be able to apply a U-shaped band of this material in the regions where we're looking to address. So we're completely reliant upon the bond. In the past, if you did rely on the bond, you were only able to develop about 40 to 50 percent of the ultimate strength of the carbon fiber material. And that would only gain us about a 5 percent increase in shear strength. We wanted to increase that. So we started looking at different ways of being able to anchor that material in that U-shaped band that goes around there. Other states had used anchorages. They'd used mechanical anchorages but it was found that these had a tendency to damage the carbon fiber material. And so we started investigating the use of carbon fiber anchors in which a hole was drilled into the beam itself and a plug of this carbon fiber material was inserted and epoxied in and then it was splayed out and placed in between two layers of the carbon fiber material. This significantly increased the capacity and it actually allowed the carbon fiber to attain its full ultimate capacity in that application and we were able to increase the shear strengthening uh, up to 50 percent increase. So it was, a, it was a good bang for the buck and we were able to verify this through full-scale testing. It gives us another tool in our toolbox. We're always looking for ways to be able to extend the lives of structures. I know that there's a lot of pressure across the state and across the country to be able to increase the legal loads on bridges. So we have to be able to keep these bridges that were built 30, 40, 50, even 10 years ago to d lower design loads, have to keep them in service and we have to find ways to be able to do this in an effective manner that maintains the safety of the bridge. We're trying to use new materials to be able to do this and extend the life of these structures and to be able to carry the loads that they're expected to be carrying.